must be recorded in the court register. Parliament can't be supreme lawmaker. So, so basically, it carries no weight. And these are not enforceable documents. The rule of law, everybody is subject to it. Do you know what makes me laugh about this, Mark? Nothing. Hey, Brian. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to everybody who celebrates. But really, it's you. There you go. So the new year springs on its way after three days of, um, what was it, before the rebirth or something like that of the sun because the day lengths start to get longer and spring is on its way. <laughs> and uh, today we, we're going to thank two uh, very well-known people on the internet yeah. uh, for some... Give credit words, Jim. <laughs> uh, for the... For the for Contributions. The well decent con contributions because you know yeah. let's you know thank people where where it's neat where it's um justified obviously yeah. um but we're going to go through or mark's going to go through some uh points to offer a different opinion <laughs> with um with some supporting evidence yeah so yeah, yeah it's going to be interesting this uh, one will be absolutely right. Right. So, I mean, basically, this is about the two recent videos, uh, one from Richard Vobes uh, about the uh, unenforceability of council tax uh, based on uh, work uh, that was submitted by, um, I'll call him 98th Monkey because uh, he doesn't want his name put out. And it, it, it really does directly link back to what we've been saying over the last, what, two years that since we've been doing this um, council tax challenge withholding. Yeah. Um, and it reinforces the uh, procedure of the three notices. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that wasn't discussed. What we we'll want to do is just sort of discuss a couple of points that were made on these videos. Uh, first, a big thanks to uh, Richard Vobes to actually providing evidence and working through evidence because that makes it very easy for people to um, formulate a, a opinion. Mm. Uh, and Black Belt Barristers does the same, provides uh, supporting evidence, and that's what it's about. Because remember, this is about the search for truth. Yes. We need to resolve this, and uh, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, so a couple of comments. <clears throat> um, a little knowledge is dangerous, is one of them. Certainly is. Now, as the saying goes, a little knowledge is dangerous. Uh, specifically from Black Belt Barrister, where he says, um, as he does not know the facts of the case, uh, he merely is expressing an opinion, which is not legal advice. Yeah. Um, I don't know the facts of that case. And so I don't know the facts of your case, which is why my videos can't be legal advice. And that's important because uh, um, with the, uh, it differentiates between what is legislation. You'll hear the legal professionals, they use the word legislation and what is law. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've made numerous videos on it. By admission, uh, Parliament uh, admits an act of Parliament. Not only is it not called law, um, they make false claims that it is law. Uh, however, uh, within the section understanding legislation, they admit it's the interpretation of the expressed intent of the legislatures so it's the expressed intent of the compromise between the 650 mps plus if the lords put their bits two bits in as well mm -hmm. so that's the expressed intent and the law is created in the courts by interpreting the intent so parliament does not create law it creates acts of parliament and the Acts of Parliament are interpreted by the courts to determine the intent of Parliament. Right. And that is, uh, uh, should be carried out under strict rules of interpretation. 
uh, which is where the problem comes in because not many people understand the statutory interpretation rules and that's why we get this you know unevidenced uh, belief that legislation is law it's not law is created in the courts through an order uh, and uh, if you don't comply with that order uh, then you're in breach of the law okay <laughs> So hopefully, again, people really do need to understand it. I um, think we might have to do a very short video just on that subject. Just, uh, yeah. just clarify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm putting together a constitutional course, and that will include the basics of statutory interpretation so that people, uh, you know, can start to get an understanding of it. Yeah. When I use the word constitutional, I mean it in the context of not whether there's a written or unwritten constitution, it's any evidence of uh, any documentary evidence which expresses the, the relationship between those governing mm -hmm. and the governed. And yeah. that's what I mean, uh, constitutional. Yeah, got it. Okay, but the the first point really uh, where, where um, Black Belt Barrister has a go at Richard, okay, is in regards the, the uh, Justices Clark's Society revised uh, 2023 document. Right. Uh, now, uh, on our website, okay, there's a resources page. It'll be coming under more. We'll be putting in a link. You refresh the page, it's already done. Hmm? You oh. refresh that page, it's already done. Oh, okay, you work faster than me, mate. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right, so we can go to resources under the more tab which takes us here. And here I'm starting to put in uh, links, which I think people should, uh, uh, you know, we're uh, be, be building up resources here. Yeah. So there's one here for the Justices Clark Society and that there's the uh, update which both Black Belt Barrister and Richard Vogues referred to. So you can download it from here. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, with that, what they're doing is they're referring to, uh, okay, let me just see if I can, uh, if I move this on here, can you see yep, the, got it. the change in screen? Yeah. Okay. So this here is the, the 2019. Just increases the uh, size. Mark. Yeah, just hold on. Uh, okay, so we want to start with the 2023 one which is this, we've spoken about this before, this largely resulted this update from all of the people that are sending out the notices and the FOIs that were done to the MOJ. Mm. So basically it's about, what they're talking about is section four, okay? So let's make that as big as possible so people can see. Uh, okay. Okay. So basically, this is the section that's been referred to. Okay, but both of them are misrepresenting or, or they're not expressing really because they don't uh, understand why this change has occurred. Right, okay. So this change occurred as a result, like I say, of the pressure people have been putting on in regards to the liability orders. Yeah. Uh, not... Uh, being produced and when the council sends you the notice of liability order uh, this here then is what we use to say thanks for your notice but please send us the liability order yeah uh, along with the notices there plus the uh, FOIs we were doing with the MOJ again it's team effort it's not one person that's doing this all um, th this is what resulted in this so basically the first thing, like both of them uh, uh, point out, the order is made when presiding judge justice pronounces it. Okay, and they're both correct in that. Now, Richard does not understand this section part, uh, this second part. Uh, but Black Belt Barrister did explain, uh, albeit incorrectly, where he referred to county court judgments uh in the of the court's register 
it's actually like council taxes we all know is done in the magistrates courts and not the county court but that's i'm sure just a slip of the tongue sure however it's it's this year is extremely important and the reason for that is if this year is what an order is deemed to be um that means uh, it's only the people that were in court that witnessed it being pronounced that actually can provide evidence of its existence. Mm. Uh, and if uh, and as uh, Black Belt Barrister points out, uh, the court, the council sends out a notice of liability order. The notice, because whoever sent you that uh, notice was not present in the court is what's called hearsay evidence. It's somebody's opinion. And therefore, it is not a, a, a document of the court. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason uh, uh, for this, the notices, okay, it goes on the council software should generate a notice that has been made, which is sent to the defendant. It's very clear, and this was one of our arguments, okay, and I'll show you that the council, the, the Ministry of Justice has agreed with the evidence we put forward to them. Okay, they should be not, not be signed or endorsed with the name of a JP or court officer, still let justices, uh, justices clerk. The reason for the still lesser justices clerk is there are no more justices clerks. They're called inv legal advisors now. Right. And the reason for that is here. And this I'll make very big so that people can see the reason for it. Oh, that's better. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Some councils are still sending out the, their notification in the form of liability order. But even so, it is not a court-generated document. Okay. It is notification of the order made by the justices. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we've... Uh, going back to the uh, this one um, in the council tax update which we did uh, last November um, in step 12 okay we go through and we've got some FOIs down there yeah and, and if we look at the FOI okay uh, so this is from December last year okay and it is very clear and this is what Black Belt Barrister says. It must be recorded in the court register. Yep. Okay. And the only document which is a definitive record of the content of the register is a copy of that register certified by a court officer. That's actually incorrect. It also can be an extract of the court register, which is what they say here. Yep. Okay. If genuine doubt remains, they should could contact the court and ask for confirmation, the gold standard would be a certified extract, a copy of the court register signed by the court officer. Okay? The same, this is the same for civil and criminal procedures. So hopefully now people understand uh, why uh, the um, uh, court order is not I mean the notice of the court order from the council is not a um, order of the court it is not a court document therefore it is not signed or got any of the court officers names on it it is merely a notice however that is not evidence of the existence of a court order and if you look at our enforcement notices, as well as our notices to the council, thanking them for their notice of a, a court order, okay? Um, these are not enforceable documents, uh, which as both of both Richard and Black Belt Barrister pointed out, um, they are not enforceable because they do not show authority from the court uh, for a uh, enforcement agent to come to your door. So, so basically, it carries no weight whatsoever. It carries no weight whatsoever. Okay, 
and clear as okay uh, and that uh, judgment is a high court judgment so it's got equal standing to the one that black belt barrister took us to uh, took takes people to which itself actually i really do want to thank black belt barrister for that because it's confirmed something else that we've uh, been pushing uh, which is rule 33 now again this goes back to the statutory interpretation okay primary legislation confers powers for secondary legislation to be made however it's the interpretation of either primary or secondary legislation which creates law and the High Court has confirmed that there must be a final notice for the full amount, whereas most councils only send one notice for an instalment, a reminder notice. Right. So the law says that the proper way to do it is, which is what we've been saying, uh, if you're late on your first instalment, then they send you a notice an installment reminder. Uh, most councils don't then send out, as is the law created in the court, the interpretation of what is fair and just. Um, they need to send then a notice for the full amount, which is under Section 33. And therefore, uh, just about every liability order that's been made since we've been involved in this, uh, certainly uh, since we started the Knock Knock Challenge, is unlawful because it's ultra virus, which means without authority, mm -hmm. because they failed to provide a notice under Rule 33, which in 2018 confirmed, was confirmed as a lawful obligation by the High Court. So there's another reason to challenge every single liability order since 2018. Right. So thanks, Black Belt Barrister, for uh, that judgment. And the Supreme Court judgment assists us with another uh, issue that we're dealing with, but that's another matter. Now, I don't want to do any put any comments on uh, uh, in regards late and uh, the latent judgment at this point okay in, uh, at the peacekeeper meetings i've i've given a brief summary but it's one fantastic judgment uh which really assists uh all of us which are challenging uh the whole lawfulness of what's going on um it's not that we're anti-government it's not that we're anti-paying pa council tax or contributing to society what we're doing is the rule of law. The rule of law, everybody is subject to it, yet a, a parliament believes it's above the law. <laughs> okay? And uh, this will be covered in much more depth as to why that's a misconception. Mm. Already here we've said they make acts of parliament which is a collective expression of the multiple minds. Mm -hmm. That collective expression must be interpreted under statutory interpretation by the courts, and that is what creates law. Right. Parliament does not create law. It's got no authority to create law. Why? Because no individual or groups of individual can uh, evidence the right to impose their will on any other individual or group of individuals which is self-evident that all are equal under the law and nobody's above the law. So hence, prime minister, monarch, judge, uh, policeman, everybody is subject to the same law. Can't get any clearer than that. So, uh, but like I say, that'll be separately covered in the constitutional course, which hopefully will be out by next uh, Easter is sort of my... Uh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully uh, people um, uh, sort of have seen a bit more evidence. And I just want to finish off with sharing my screen again. Sure. Okay. Because this shows you the intent. 
behind council tax. Okay, so this is in the Justices Clark Society Council Tax Enforcement, November 2019. Okay, uh, uh, where is this? Right. Now, here, let's make this big. Okay. Right. What is the purpose of committing people to commit them to prison? To coerce payment. <laughs> okay. It always makes me laugh. You can't be clearer than that. Yeah. Okay. And then <clears throat> I just want to take you to the Human Rights Act as well. Uh, this is the one of the two judgments from Black Belt Barrister. Okay. So it's to coerce payment from you. And let's just let's just give people uh, a quick dictionary uh, definition of coerce yeah persuade an unwilling person to do something by using force or threats let's get that really really clear that word yeah yeah nothing lawful about that okay coerce and it's coerce. Blatant, blatantly there yeah now if we're, if we're going the human rights act go down to the articles and let's make this bigger again so people can see what tax is all about Okay, this is um, part one. If you scroll down to part two, okay, part two, the first protocol, article one. Now, here Parliament uh, has made its intent absolutely clear in the second part, of the second paragraph. Okay, so let's make that even bigger. So they coerce stuff out of you okay uh -huh. but then okay they will take your private property protection of property yeah okay? you're only allowed the peaceful enjoyment of it um unless you owe taxes or other contributions or penalties i.e like we put out in the other video so they try and coerce you in different ways by stealing your stuff. They tell you under the Human Rights Act that their justification is to steal your stuff if you don't do what they want. It is no different from a bunch of mafia. And until people start to realize this, that we don't have the rule of law uh, and that uh, we're living basically, don't pay your protection money, that's it, you have no rights. Do you know what makes me laugh about this, Mark? Nothing. It's not funny. Because it's not bloody funny. Yeah. You know, we, I know we laugh and you have a little snigger every now and then. No, I know. No, I mean, when you look at people losing their funny. homes, the nonsense, it's just insane. So I hope uh, people enjoy this. And then we'll wait for Black Belt Barrister's um, take on the latent judgment because... There are three, there are probably three things which you'll miss out on there. Uh, and those three things are extremely important. We'll let the legal professionals uh, give us their opinion first. Uh, but all of you that have been doing your notices, the, the solution's in there. So let's see yeah. if Black Moss Paris can find that one. Watch this space. Do you know what? I actually quite look forward to... Uh... Um, Daniel's uh, videos because um, now he's he's um, actually given us some more stuff to go on. Uh, yeah, but it's the usual so. thing with uh, the same with the council. They give us the information always, always. Um, so uh, you know the old saying: uh, "Give them the rope, and they'll hang themselves." But so <laughs> far, it's been you don't even need to give them the rope because there are so many inconsistencies and contradictions in what's being said, um, which means ignorance of the law is supposedly no excuse. But if the law is totally subjective, uh, there is no law. It's, it's not a car crash, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but this is what we're trying to show people. Just, you know, it, it's simple. Uh, the constitutional principles are the rule of law 
and the separation of powers. And what the separation of powers means is actually that parliament is sovereign, that the government or the executive is sovereign and the judiciary is sovereign. They are sovereign, all constrained by the rule of law, which means parliament can't be supreme lawmaker. Well, uh, apparently, Mark, it's all right to persuade uh, an unwilling person to do something uh, by using force and threat. So, you know, coercion's OK. Uh, no, but hang on. That's a, a reserved activity only for... Or special what? people. Yeah, special people. Sure. Yeah, yeah. that's what I meant. It's OK. Yeah. Parliament. Anyway, I think we better leave it there because this is all a matter for another discussion. <laughs> right, mate. Will... Well, okay. uh, we'll see you yeah. soon.